Burt Middleton again, the gout killer, and this is part four of my review of the American College of Rheumatology's new gout guidelines. Um, kind of the blog post that was done by Medscape, um, 16 slides. Uh, we left, on, left off on video number three, part three, um, with um, slide number eight of 16. We're going to move on to number nine. Choosing an NSAID, full doses of FDA or European medicines agency approved NSAIDs are recommended to treat an acute gout attack, an acute attack of gout. Naproxen, indomethacin, and sun, sunildac are FDA approved for acute gout. However, other NSAIDs may be effective. Data also support the e efficacy of COX-2 inhibitors. The TFP also recommends selicozib, an initial dose of 800 milligrams followed by 400 milligrams on day one and then dosed at 400 milligrams twice daily for one week for acute disease in patients intolerant to or with contrain dictations of other NSAIDs. So, <clears throat> You don't need anything more than generic ibuprofen you buy at Walmart. If you're going to take any of this crap, you know, go down there, get that stuff. As you start to raise your body chemistry, the pH of your body chemistry up into a more alkaline level with simple household items, foods, baking soda, apple cider vinegar, um, Epsom salts, all of those kind of things. The, the insects, generic ibuprofen is going to work a thousand, is going to work so well. Okay, that's what you need to be doing. Now, I only have one kidney. I'm supposed to stay away from insects. I can tell you for sure that I took colchicine, ibuprofen, indomethacin, colchicine, ibuprofen, indomethacin, day after day after day trying to figure this out. And once I understood everything from the point of acid alkaline balance and just knowing I'm too acidic in general, then I made complete progress and I haven't had a gout attack now in four years. So I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to move on to um, slide number 10 of 16. Now colchicine, here we are at colchicine. Um, it's from the... Uh, um, Autumn crocus plant, also known as meadow saffron. So, you know, colchicine was actually a good thing until it went to, it became FDA approved, and now you can only get it as colchris, and it's $5 a pill. It used to be four cents a pill. Anyway, colchicine. Colchicine is a recommended option in acute gout if the attack began within the past 36 hours. Recommended treatment consists of, load, of a loading dose of 1.2 milligrams of colchicine followed by 0.6 milligrams an hour later. This can then be followed 12 hours later by prophylactic colchicine using 0.6 milligrams once or twice daily that can be continued until the gout attack resolves. In, in countries where 1.0 milligrams or 0.5 milligram tablets of colchicine are available, instead of the 0.6 milligram tablets, recommended treatment consists of the loading dose of 1.0 milligrams of colchicine followed by a 0.5 milligram one hour later. Then this can be then followed 12 hours later by prophylactic colchicine dosing of 0.5 milligrams up to three times daily that may be continued until the gout attack resolves. We're not going to go long on that one. Colchicine was a great thing. It came from a natural source even though they modified the hell out of it. The problem is it's, it's poisonous. <laughs> and if you take too much of it, you start getting all kinds of um, digestion and abdominal cramps and things like that and diarrhea. So, you know, it's, it's good. If you can afford it, I guess. If you want off, if you want to afford it, I'm sure you can afford it. So, anyway, we're going to move on to um, slide number ten of sixteen, and this is starting steroids. Now, for an acute gout attack involving one or two joints, the ACR TFP recommends treating with oral corticosteroids. 
use of intra-articular articular corticosteroids is recommended when one or two large joints are involved. The decision to use intra-articular dosing should be based upon joint size. Intra-articular corticosteroids can be used in combination with NSAIDs, colchicine, or oral corticosteroids. Re recommended oral, oral corticosteroids include prednisone and prednisone at a dose of 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day for five to 10 days or, the, or for two to five days at this full dose, followed by a seven to 10 day taper and then discontinuation. An alternative approved approach is the administration of a single intramuscular dose of trimenoclone acetonide 60 milligrams, which may be followed by oral prednisone or prednisone oral prednisone or prednisone. Intramuscular trimethicolone acetonide is most useful when treating patients who are to take nothing by mouth or those who may be less compliant with a multi-dose oral treatment regimen. Okay, now we're getting into steroids. Prednisone, really nasty stuff, okay? I've never had to take prednisone, but I've dealt with lots of people that are using that. And I just got through with one guy who was on it for almost a month. Went through a whole thing, the gout attack went away, and then came back even worse. So we started to use um, a more uh, a more of an approach of really attacking this thing from the acidic the acid alkaline balance idea and using more of the NSAIDs and slowly this the scout attack was dug in so deep that it took another week and a half before we were able to get it to go away. So prednisone is some pretty nasty stuff. If you've mismanaged your health to that degree and you have to use prednisone, you have to follow your doctor's orders and it probably is something you're gonna need to do. That's all I can say about that. So slide number 12 of 16, inadequate response to initial therapy. <clears throat> if a patient with acute gout does not experience at least 20% improvement, improvement in pain within 24 hours or at least 50% improvement in pain 24 hours or more of pharmacologic therapy, an alternative diagnosis should be considered. If the diagnosis of gout is, confir is confirmed, the patient should be switched to another monotherapy or a second agent should be added. Because there are no randomized studies for of anakinra treatment of gout, and because Kenumad is not FDA approved, the role of interleukin-1 inhibitor therapy for acute gout remains uncertain. You know, now we are getting so far into drugs. I mean, you have really, um, you are really in a very serious state of health mismanagement. I'd like to address this part, 20% improvement in 24 hours, 50% improvement in pain 24 hours or more, using simple natural remedies and methods that I've tested myself and used as my own experience and then promoted them to all of these other different people who I've gotten so much good response, people just thanking me for it. It's really hard for me to see how you can go further and further into pharmaceutical drugs for therapy for gout, knowing that pharmaceutical drugs are substances that your body basically rejects. It is a... a it is a, an unnatural substance. Pharmaceutical drugs are unnatural substances that the body then is trying to reject. It only creates more acidity in the body. They may have very specific, um, uh, may produce very specific results, but it's usually at the expense of the bigger picture. So we're gonna leave this video right here. This was video number four of the Gout Killer Review of the 
American College of Rheumatology's new gout guidelines and we're going to go into video number five. Hopefully we'll finish up with that one and so stay tuned. Thanks.